Well, hello. It's Sunday night, December 18th, and I have something a little different to share with you tonight. This is going to be a real short video. This little jewel is was a rust job I did for a lady who wants to give this to her daughter for Christmas. This is a 1960, 59 or 60, Grundig record changer. Now, this thing shares some things, some characteristics with Voice of Music record changers, but it's a, it's a beast all its own. It's a different design. There are a lot of similarities, but it is a different design. And you know what? It's a really well-made unit. This thing was built in Germany. I, as most of you know, I'm very pro-American, and I don't work on European stuff very often, but I really, really like German record changers and turntables. I have a lot of duels. I have some PEs, and I, I, I really like working on German stuff in that regard. But I'm going to show this thing to you in a minute. I'll turn it on and uh, play a little bit of music for you. And hopefully I've picked music that doesn't get me dinged for copyright. But I want to take you on a real quick little tour of this record changer. It works just like every other record changer. You know, it's got the, uh, the support arm here. You see the little deal there that detects a 12-inch record. Also, this little deal here detects one uh, that a record has fallen. This little guy, a record, will run, ride on it, and that detects whether it's a 12-inch or uh, the small size of a 45. I think that's 7-inch. This thing uh, has, has uh, four speeds. It plays 16, 33, 45, and 78. What did I do to this record changer? Well, I um, replaced the cartridge. It had a ceramic cartridge made by Telefunken, one that has not been available for years. And so I put a Fon Steel P226 in there with uh, some minor, minor modifications to make it fit. I, of course, disassembled and cleaned very well. Cleaned um, all the mechanism, cleaned uh, all, the, all the drive stuff, all the record changer stuff, uh, cleaned the bearings, took the motor out, cleaned the motor bearings. I also uh, bypassed the 110 and 240 volt switch. That switch was given lots of trouble on this machine. It was unreliable. Sometimes it would uh, work and, you know, sometimes the record player would just stop playing and I would move the switch and it would start up again. We don't need that. So I just went around it. This record changer is unlikely to ever be outside of North America. So I just set it permanently for 110. However, I made no real permanent changes to the machine. It could always be put back if someone wanted to. It's a beautiful machine, very well made. I love the sleek lines. Very aerodynamic, if that makes any sense. That tone arm, just a great looking tone arm. The Fon Steel P226 looks real good in there. It, uh, it's nice and tidy. It's not, uh, it, it's not a bad fit at all. Let's take a look at it. Let's lift the tone arm up real gently. See if you can take a look. So it's a nice, tidy setup. And I added just a little bit of weight up in the nose with that screw and washer, just enough. This thing has a tracking force now of about 4.5 grams. That 226 is rated at, I believe, from 4 to 8 grams. So it's right on the light end. If I needed to, or if the owner of this needed to, they, you can change the tracking force with that spring adjustment right there. So that's no big deal. That's easy to do. But right now, the tracking force seems to be right. If I bump the table, it'll make it skip. But that's more or less what you want. If I play my nice, uh, one of my nice turntables, one of my nice duels on this bench, it'll skip also if I bump the bench. So I cleaned everything. I replaced that cartridge. It did not need a new idler wheel. I, I've never taken in an old one before that didn't need a new idler wheel. But this one was fine. I cleaned up the rubber on the idler wheel. I took a little time to dress it. Used a little rubber renew, you know, some toluene and acetone, and cleaned it up. And I'll be darned, it just works great. No slippage whatsoever. No, no uh, speed wandering that I can detect. Now, that may come later because the rubber is not new, but we'll see. So, for right now, I think it's going to be fine, and it's easy enough to change if we have to. And then, of course, I cleaned and polished the, uh, uh, the, the table itself, you know, the base plate and the, the platter, the tone arm and all that stuff. I cleaned and polished all that. So it's basically just a real nice unit. It goes in a Grundig Majestic, which is a 1960 console, a very big stereo console. I should have mentioned this is a stereo turntable, as you can tell by the, the tag there. 
It's a big, the Majestic uh, console is a big unit. Um, very nice. It's beautiful sounding. So I think this thing is going to do great. Now, what am I going to play this into? For right now, I'm going to play it into one of my favorite radios that I hadn't had, it out, had out in a while. It'll do fine for this. It, it tests it well enough. And that's this guy right here. This is a uh, an RCA. This is one of my favorite radios. I refinished this cabinet uh, a couple of years ago, and uh, I'm I'm really pleased with it. This I, I get this out every now and then and play it. It's starting to hum now. I didn't I haven't restored it. This all I did was restore the cabinet. I didn't restore the radio itself. I'll get around to that. I've been too busy with other projects for other folks right now. But this is uh, one that I will get to. For now, I just like to admire the way it looks. I, I like the imposing. Um, you know, sort of stature of it. It's it's large, it's square, it's sort of in your face, it's very um, stately. It's a nice radio and very well made. So I will go ahead and put the camera on the tripod and we'll uh, spin up a record. And hopefully I will not uh, get a copyright ding. Let's see. Let's uh, cross your fingers, guys. All right, let me go ahead and turn on the RCA. It's already set to phono. It's got pretty dial lights. I really am very fond of this radio. And uh, I will get out. Here's what I'm going to play. The Roaring Twenties. Please tell me I will not get a copyright ding by playing the Roaring Twenties. So let's just see. Um, the first song on that will come up is called Goody Goody. We all know that song. I know that song anyway. I hope you do. Um, if, you weren't born, if you were born any, any, uh, any earlier than day before yesterday, you probably know this song. Let me go ahead and get it started. Okay, sounds like the radio is warming up. Like I said, it has a bit of a hum. And it all the capacitors and everything in this radio are original, so it's got a little distortion, but you know what? It's going to work for this. I forgot I've got to turn on the uh, transformer so I can power up that record changer. Okay, radio's hot, record changer's hot. Let's, let's loosen the needle from its rest. It, it's got a locking rest. Needle guard is off, so... Let's go ahead and give her a whirl, shall we? It hums a little bit because it's not grounded. Remember how I said I was worried about the tracking force maybe being a little too light? It turns out it was, and that was causing the skipping. It also made the record not sound as good as it can. So uh, let's see what I do about that. Well, I had a little skipping problem. I thought the four grams, four and a half grams of tracking force might be a little bit tricky. So I've just adjusted the tracking force, and I'm going to check it right now. To do that, you actually have to set the, uh, the stylus onto the, the force gauge and take a physical measurement. So let me do that right here. It always gives me the creeps doing that. I don't like doing it. Okay, there we go. Okay, it's resting on the force gauge. Let me see what I got. It's more like it. It's about uh, oh, about about seven grams. That's going to have to work. Yep, about seven grams. That should give me a better tracking force. I should be able to track on the record better and and uh, actually get better sound. The way this works is you rest the you physically rest the needle on this little cradle here, and uh, then you reach your hand over and you move this until you see that little thing in the little window here moving you push this down until you can get that window centered and you have to go past it and then kind of come back and go back and forth till you get it centered and where it's centered you read the, the tracking force off this gauge it's a quick and dirty gauge measurement there are more accurate ones I have some that have have uh, physical weights it's really a balance with some little brass weights but that takes a lot of time to set up and to use so this is a nice quick and dirty way to measure tracking force and uh, this, on, these, on this vintage of record changer, this works really well. Most of those that I have that uh, have weights are meant for 
modern turntables with magnetic cartridges that are we're talking tracking force in the in the range of one to two grams. So that one's perfect for this. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna try this again, okay? Radio is still hot. I, I never turned it off. I'm gonna turn the power back onto the record changer. Let's see how we do. I will uh, try again. All right. Needle guard, needle guard is off. Okay, let's go. Let's give her a shot. Okay. when you don't have the record up on the uh, spindle it'll think it's a 45 that's on there oh much better much better even sounds better oh yeah that was music man Let's try something else, just in case. the capacitors in this old radio uh, have never been replaced they're original from 1949 and so I need to get around to it because they're sounding pretty distorted now. position better so it's not preventing the mechanism from operating it's tough to do I, ha I keep meaning to build a little uh, jig but every record changer is different so the jig has to be very adjustable and uh, with other things I've had going on I just haven't gotten to it but I will get to it just like everything else okay let's uh, let's go ahead and put the other side on let's see I have never listened to the other side of this but I love 20s music rings on her fingers don't know that song Let's give her a shot and see if I can get to know that song. too is that I have both channels feeding into one. This is not a stereo radio. This is a stereo cartridge, a stereo record changer. So I've taken the left and right and put them together and fed into this. Now you lose some fidelity when you do that. You also lose a little bit of total volume because you have some minor canceling going on. But generally you gain in volume. You just lose some of the peaks. Um, I, you know, what can I do? I don't have a stereo radio that I can fit on my bench, so it sounds pretty good. I'm pretty pleased with it. No speed problems at all. So let me reject it. 
And I'm going to grab a 45 and give that a whirl, and then I'll call it a wrap. Okay, I've got a 45. It's an oldie. It's Christopher Columbus by, by the Ernie Fields Orchestra. Never heard that one before. Okay, we'll give it a shot. We'll hear it after this. Put it on the adapter. Lower the control arm. Reject. Let's see how it sounds. Ask your teenager if they know what to do with a song like this. Just so you know, that other record wouldn't play this loud. Records vary in, revolume, in volume. It depends a lot on the quality of the, the material used to make the record, how good the mastering was, the recording, the recording level and so forth, and how high quality the pressing was. If you've got a real cheap record made of thin vinyl, they're usually real flexible. The grooves aren't real deep, and so you lose some bass response. You lose, you, you, you don't get, uh, uh, complete activity of the groove if the groove's not as deep. I don't quite know how to explain it, but I, I know when I buy a really good quality record, it's usually thicker and heavier and the grooves are deeper. So it's worth thinking about. So this is a pretty decent quality record and it plays nice and loud and clear. <laughs> Okay, that's re okay. I will adjust that so it didn't didn't quite get to the end of the song before it rejected. It was just about in the last in the lead out groove, so I'll check that out. That's not a big deal. Okay, so uh, here we go. I just uh, uh, thought I'd give it a shot. Let me uh, let me show you what's underneath here real quick. Okay. Okay, we're under the record player now, the Grundig. There's that switch that I bypassed. And uh, I left the wires, the blue and the uh, black wires, I left them in place. And uh, I just, uh, the, the motor runs in parallel, the two coils here run in parallel. So I tied them together in parallel directly. When you run in 240, they run in series, so hence the need for the switch. We're not going to worry about that. We're going to we're expecting to run this thing uh, in, the, in in North America, so no need to be setting this up for 240 volt. It looks a lot like a Voice of Music player. There's some differences. Of course, it's kind of a funky motor. Um, AEG. I, I'm you know I'm not terribly familiar with those motors, but motors are motors, and the uh, changer mechanism is very much like Voice of Music. The uh, tone arm pivot and tone arm uh, elevator are very much like voice and music. It's got a little bit of almost like a crossover network, you know, for the um, for the pickup. And I replaced all of those components. Every one of those is new or new old stock, and they all measured within 5%. Even that one that's a 10% resistor measured uh, right spot on. Everything has been cleaned and lubricated. There was a lot of nasty old lubricant on this. Somebody had over lubricated this in the past. You don't need to lubricate them that much. So I always use uh, Singer sewing machine grease and Singer sewing machine oil. This is the perfect application for that stuff uh, because it's designed for slower moving light machinery. So it works perfectly for this and it'll last a long time. If you're using lithium grease, you're going to be doing it again in a year. I just don't think that's smart. Uh, the, this typical of German stuff where things are hooked up together with these little terminal blocks, these screw terminal blocks. So there you go. It's a nice machine. It should last the owner quite a long time. And with that, I think I'm going to wrap it up for tonight. This was just meant to be a quick little video. This is a 1960 Grundig record player and record changer. So with that, I will talk to you soon as I begin on the Scott 800B. From Salt Lake City, this is Michael. That's all for now.